everyone. Welcome to the Education Hour. I'm your host, Shalika Jailath. Last week, we investigated the number phi. This week, we continue our foray into number theory. And I can almost hear you asking me, what is number theory? Mathematics can be broken down into different branches. And the branch that looks at the relationships between numbers is known as number theory. One of the most famous numbers in mathematics is the number 1729. 1, 7, 2, 9, which is commonly known as the taxicab number and associated with the self-taught mathematical genius Srinivasa Ramanujan. Ramanujan was born in 1887 in a small village about 400 kilometers out of Chennai in South India. He was considered a miracle child by his mother as he was the only one of her four children to survive past the age of one year. When he was a year old, his family moved to the town of Kumbakonam, where his father had a job as a clerk in a sari shop. Ramanujan was a bright student and in fact obtained the highest marks in the district for English, Tamil, Geography and Arithmetic in his primary school exams, after which he entered secondary school where his love affair with numbers began. He was lent a book on advanced trigonometry, which he mastered by the age of 13. He then began to work on his own on mathematics, summing geometric and arithmetic series. By the age of 17, Ramanujan had begun to undertake deep research into mathematics entirely on his own. He would visit the Sarangapani temple in Kumbakonam and work on his mathematics there. He could often be found in the temple surrounded by complex mathematical equations that he had written in chalk on the stone floor of the temple. One reason for writing on the floor would have been the cost of paper that his family could not afford. But also Ramanujan was deeply religious and believed that his ability to solve problems instinctively was the result of divine knowledge. According to Ramanujan, his family goddess, Namagiri Tayar, a form of the goddess Mahalakshmi, appeared to him in visions, proposing mathematical formulae that he would then have to verify. He once said, an equation for me has no meaning unless it expresses a thought of God. At this time, at the age of 17, he received a scholarship to study at the Government Arts College in Kumbakonam. However, his obsession with mathematics was by this time so strong that he failed most of his other subjects and therefore lost his scholarship. With no degree and barely having any money, Ramanujan started tutoring students in mathematics for a living. He eventually got a temporary job in the Madras Accountant General's office. He tried to discuss his work with mathematicians in India, but although he did get to publish an article on Bernoulli numbers in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society, he was largely ignored as his ideas were considered to be too unique and unusual. In 1913, he began a postal correspondence with the English mathematician G. H. Hardy at the University of Cambridge in England. Ramanujan's 10-page letter with samples of his work on number theory reached Professor Hardy, who felt that some of Ramanujan's theorems were groundbreaking. Some defeated him completely. Recognizing this extraordinary talent, Hardy arranged for Ramanujan to travel to Cambridge. Ramanujan was then 26 years old. Three years later, in 1916, Ramanujan earned a PhD for his work on highly composite numbers. At the time, it was called a Bachelor of Arts by Research, but it was renamed as a PhD in 1920. Life at Cambridge, impressive though it may sound, was not easy. Remember that this was 1914 when British colonialism was at its peak. It was not common to find men of color at top prestigious universities in the UK and Ramanujan undoubtedly had to face racism. 
Add to that the fact that he was an orthodox Brahmin and therefore a strict vegetarian. And not only would he not have fitted into the cultural fabric of Britain, but he would have had problems with his diet. The outbreak of World War I made obtaining special items of food harder. Indeed, his poor diet, combined with his long hours of study and research, gradually broke down his health. Ramanujan fell seriously ill in 1970. At the time, doctors thought he had contracted tuberculosis, combined with a severe vitamin deficiency, probably the result of his poor diet, and warded him in a nursing home. However, a 1994 study of his medical records reveals that his symptoms were closer to hepatic amoebiasis than tuberculosis. Ramanujan had suffered two episodes of dysentery before he left India. When not properly treated, amoebic dysentery can lie dormant for years and lead to hepatic amoebiasis, whose diagnosis in 1917 was not well established. His mentor and friend Hardy would frequently visit him in hospital, and it was on one of these visits that the famous taxicab number came to be. Hardy described the incident as follows. I remember once going to see him when he was lying ill at Putney. I had ridden in taxicab number 1729 and remarked that the number seemed to me rather a dull one and that I hoped it was not an unfavorable omen. No, he replied, it is a very interesting number. It is the smallest number expressible as a sum of two cubes in two different ways. The number 1729 can be expressed as 1 cubed plus 12 cubed or as 9 cubed plus 10 cubed. Try it for yourself. 1 cubed which is 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 and 12 cubed which is 12 times 12 times 12 is 1728. Add the 2 we get 1729. 9 cubed is 729 and 10 cubed is a thousand. When we add them up we get 1729 again. And this is what Ramanujan meant when he said that the number 1729 could be expressed as a sum of two cubes in two different ways. To date only six such taxicab numbers have been discovered and 1729 is the smallest of them. Back to Ramanujan. It took him about a year to recover. In 1918, he became the youngest fellow of the Royal Society and was elected as a fellow of Trinity College, Cambridge. These honours gave him a new lease of life and he renewed his research efforts. By the end of 1918, Ramanujan's health had greatly improved and with World War I now over, he headed back to India. But he suffered a relapse and despite medical treatment, he lasted for only a year after that, passing away in April 1920 at the age of 32. In his very short lifetime, Ramanujan compiled almost 3,900 results on equations and identities, many of which were proven correct after his death. His notebooks, containing summaries of his published and unpublished results, have been analyzed and studied for decades since his death as a source of new mathematical ideas and the theories put forward by Ramanujan have transformed 20th century mathematics. Even now, after a hundred years, scientists and scholars are still working on research papers based on his work. More and more scientists are coming forward with their top findings only to discover that Ramanujan had already been there before. His lost notebook containing discoveries from the last year of his life was discovered in 1976 and now mathematicians at Emory University have discovered that Ramanujan did not just identify the first taxicab number, 1729. He showed how the number relates to elliptic curves and K3 surfaces objects important today in string theory and quantum physics. Mathematicians today still struggle
to manipulate and calculate with K3 surfaces. But long before a K3 surface had been officially identified and named, Ramanujan was using the number 1729 and elliptic curves to develop formulas for a K3 surface. Ramanujan's findings a hundred years ago are now being used in computer science algorithms, the superstring theory of cosmology, and the complicated molecular systems in statistical machines. Developments in science that he could not have known about. How did this simple man from humble beginnings with very little formal education and lacking exposure to advanced mathematics managed to develop equations that are helping scientists understand the behavior of black holes? Was he really guided by a higher power? What makes Ramanujan's story a remarkable one? Is it that we are able to learn about the work of a mathematical genius far ahead of his time? Is it that we get to understand how poor standards of living may end a life before its time? Or is it that we learn to appreciate how a passion for one's work combined with faith may give you, like Ramanujan, the courage to persevere despite challenges? Or is it that we see how easily cultural differences may be overcome by simply extending a hand of friendship. Professor Hardy clearly saw beyond the color of Ramanujan's skin when he made arrangements for Ramanujan to travel to England. Likewise, on his arrival in Cambridge in 1914, Ramanujan stayed in the home of Trinity Fellow E. H. Neville and his wife Alice, who managed to find a vegetarian cookbook to prepare meals for him. What is more important, to protect ourselves from that which is alien to us or to look beyond and recognize a person's true worth? Thank you for tuning in. Join me next week on the Education Hour when we look at the work of yet another genius from Trinity College, Cambridge, who has also had a lot to do with black holes. This is Shalika Jayalab. Stay safe.